In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to paint a super easy, simple landscape with watercolor brush pens. I'll be using Karen brush markers for this, but you can follow along with whatever watercolor markers that you have. For supplies, you'll need some watercolor paper, watercolor markers, some brushes, washi tape to tape around the edges of the paper, and then of course a water jar. The paper I'm using is Fabriano 100% cotton cold press paper and this is a 7 by 10 inch block. So the paper is sealed at the edges into a block and you have to break that seal to take a page away from the block. This particular paper works better than most watercolor paper with watercolor markers, so that's why I'm using it. And then I'm just using a regular roll of washi tape and I'm using Karen markers for this. I'm using four colors, greens and blues. So I have grass, 253, ocean teal, 377, Cyan 207 and Arctic Blue 264. You could even just do this with one blue and one green color. One more thing you'll need is a plate or palette to mix up marker colors on. A big wash brush is nice for blending big sections on the paper, so this is a one inch wash brush. And then I'll also use a round size 8 brush. This is a Princeton Heritage brush. Now even though I'm using a watercolor block, I'm still going to use washi tape to tape around the edges just because I want a nice crisp white edge around the painting. Make sure that tape is sealed down well to the paper. All right, so we're ready to start painting. We're gonna start with the blue sky layer. So we're gonna use these two blue colors. I'm gonna use some of the deep blue at the very top and then use the light blue. I'm just scribbling the markers directly on the paper back and forth, but you don't have to do it this way. You could also scribble them on a plate or palette first and then pick that up with the paintbrush and paint with the ink. I'll be using both methods for this painting, but you can use whichever one you like best. The downside to doing it this way is that it's rough on the marker tips and it's also harder to blend the marker lines out with water, so you have to work quickly. I'm just using the markers to scribble back and forth and I'll go about halfway down the page and then I'll use my big one inch wash brush and some water to blend it out into a nice smooth gradient. And as I move toward the bottom of the paper, I'm going to fade it down into a very light blue with mostly just water on my brush. Alright, that's a nice blue gradient for our sky. There are still some subtle marker lines, but I don't mind. I might add just a little bit of this darker blue at the top and blend it in a little bit just to make it deeper up there. And now we're going to let that dry completely before we do the next layer. For the rest of this painting, I'm going to be scribbling the markers on this plate before putting it on the paper, and we're going to paint a very light mountain layer in the background. I'm using my very lightest blue marker color, and I'm going to dilute it even further with water so it's a very, very light blue. I'm using my eight round paintbrush now, and I'm going to start about maybe two thirds of the way down the page, and I'm just going to paint just the contour of a mountain. This mountain will be the farthest away from us, so I'm going to make a very light transparent color so it kind of fades into the sky background. Now I will blend it downwards a little bit with clean water, but I don't have to blend it down too far because we're just going to paint the next layer of mountains underneath and let this dry before we move on to the next layer. For the next layer, I'm just going to use a slightly darker concentration of this same light blue color and I'll slightly overlap the previous layer and stagger the mountain peaks a little bit so that the mountain lines don't get too repetitive. Anytime things get too dry, just add more water to your brush. 
and then we'll let that layer dry. For the third mountain layer, we're going to start transitioning from a blue into a green. So I'm going to mix this light blue and this green color I have here together to make a blue-green color to help us transition into doing green mountains next. And again, this mountain layer is going to be slightly darker than the two previous ones, so I'm going to make a little bit more of this mix so I can paint a slightly darker color. If a color ends up being a little bit too dark, you can always just add more water to lighten it. I'm seeing that this left edge on the mountain is a little bit darker than the other side, so I'm going to add a little bit more color to the edges on the other side so it looks more even. And then I'll let that layer dry. Next layer we're going to use another blue-green mix, but this time with more green than blue in it. Add enough water so that each mix is nice and fluid. Let that one dry and for the next layer I'm going to use this fourth color I have here. It's called Ocean Teal and it's a darker greenish blue color and I'll use this color to paint the rest of the mountain layers that I paint. Now I think I'm going to paint one more mountain layer at the bottom here in the darkest green color and so I'll let this one dry and do that next. I want this last one to be the darkest mountain and so I'm going to use more of just the marker ink color and less water in my mix. You can leave this landscape as is, or you can add some birds in the sky. So I'm going to use a black marker, just a little bit, and a smaller round brush to paint some little birds in the sky. So I guess technically that's a fifth marker color, but you could even just do this with a fine tip pen. I'm just painting a little V shape with the tip of my brush, and I think I'll paint a little cluster of these. Maybe I'll add a fourth one. Let that all dry and then we can peel the tape off. When you're peeling tape away from a painting, go slowly so you don't tear the paper. And I mostly got a pretty crisp clean edge, but as you can see in the bottom right corner there's a splotch of light blue because I did not seal the tape down well enough. So I'm just going to kind of mess with reactivating it, but it's pretty stuck in the paper. So I'm going to use a little bit of white paint just to cover it up. The paint I'm using is Dr. Martin's Bleed Proof White. Once that's dried, I'll show you how to remove a paper from a watercolor block. You just want to find the spot on the side or end somewhere where it isn't sealed to the other pages, and then you can slip something like the end of a paintbrush in there and start breaking that seal carefully around the edges of the paper.
just slide it around the edges until the paper comes away from the block. And there's the finished painting in a blue-green color scheme. I really love these colors and how they blend together. It's such a peaceful looking and simple scene and it's so easy to paint. And it would be fun to try it with other color combinations too. It's such a great way to use your watercolor markers. So let me know if you liked this tutorial and have fun painting.